We are Steve and Jill. Together, we've been buying and reselling land since the 90s. Our data-centric approach leaves our buyers asking, how can you sell it so cheap? Here on the Land Academy Show, we answer that and more. Steve and Jill here. Hello. Welcome to the Land Academy Show, entertaining land investment talk. I'm Stephen Jack Butella. And I'm Jill DeWitt, broadcasting from sunny Southern California. Today, Jill and I talk about why we've stopped yelling at title agents to close faster. Have you, have you stopped yelling at title agents altogether or just to close faster? That's my question. Uh, a little bit of both. <laughs> I'll share. Before we get into it, let's take a question posted by one of our members on the landinvestors.com online community. It's free. Brandon wrote... Okay, this is kind of long. Looks like we have the question. It's a good question. And then I have one answer. Two answers. Two answers from some members that piped in. Okay. And they're great answers, which is why I included them. Awesome. Brandon wrote, Hi guys, I'm sending my second round to purchase info lots in a county. I've developed my own red, yellow, green spreadsheet, which I use for SFRs and infills. And he attached a screenshot for people to see. That's really cool. Thanks to Jack, I realize that I'm a data nerd. Love it. Happy to help. <laughs> Sorry, Brandon. <laughs> Once I put in the zip codes, I got about 3,000 results. But as I go through the list before purchasing, I see pages and pages of associations. Some are county wildlife preservation. Many are city owned or county owned. My best guess is probably 50% of the 3,000 units or offers are either HOA, state, county, or city owned. So is it best to, one, buy, you know, download the list, scrub out the city, county, and state-owned and HOAs? To, and number two, do I sit and uncheck all those boxes before downloading the list? More work, but you can go and uncheck full pages at a time. Number three, delete the others and leave in the HOAs and mail them for one of their lots. So Lori, one of our members, wrote in, Hi, Araldo. You didn't say what source you're using for data. If you're using any of the land academy provided ones like RealQuest Pro, Title Pro, or DataTree, you can use the search filters to get rid of most of the government-owned properties. She means keyword search things like county, HOA, just the keywords. Uh, the city, names of the city in the county, the state names, the U.S. government. There's a lot of... She's right. HOAs aren't filtered, but from what I've experienced, you'll save a lot of time if you don't try to go through the search results and uncheck the suspected HOA properties. That is a pain in the ass. If you sit, you're looking 5,000 <laughs> units. Could you imagine? I'm just like my head on my desk. Uncheck, uncheck, uncheck. There's keyword uncheck, search filters. Uncheck, uncheck, uncheck. He's talking about before downloading the data, so he doesn't have to pay the Well, that's one way to do dime, it. There are yeah. keyword search filters to, yeah. uh, to remove that stuff. Yeah. It's much faster to delete rows in a worksheet if you recognize that. There. Here's the math. Best on a 3,000 unit, uh, the top line of 3,000 units, if you end up with 50% of the property, so to download 3,000 units of our data costs $300. If you're going to not use 50% of those, you're going to save yourself $150 spending about two hours removing Check. them before you download them. So you Check. have to ask yourself. Check. Check. Again, we just talked about, yesterday we talked about the math on this. Right. You, 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 if you download 3,000 units, you're going to you save yourself 150 bucks, and you're going to buy an info lot. You're going to make $20,000 on it net. You ask yourself this question. Do you want to save 150 bucks? You know you're going to make some number like that? Mm -hmm. I don't think so. But she's right. It doesn't make sense. Just, just download the data. And then Luke answered, you can get rid of most of them by asking for taxes over $100 or assess values over $1,000 and change the number around and look at the list and see what happens before what, buying. What he means is, it's good. And I do this at the very end of. I, I download all the data and I figure it out in the spreadsheet. What he's saying is, you can at, at the end of my scrub, and we teach this all. This person is not um, a member, I don't think. Hmm. I take a look at the really low assessed properties, uh, and like the slivers, or and if it's if you, if you have a, a chunk of property that's got an assessed value, depending on where it is in the country less than $100 or even $1,000, it's, it's property that's probably unusable for how we want to resell property. So just take them out, you know, unless you really want to get the phone calls for that or whatever. I mean, unless you're specializing in that kind of property and we have members that do that. So there is some use for assessed values and I hope that's clear. Is it clear? Mm -hmm. Okay. Clear as mud. <laughs> <laughs> what? 
<laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I just wanted to say that. I'm just. It's, that's a good, but, intelligent but, question. And that's good. But well, Luke is talking too. Like, I know for a fact for for those of you who are kind of, for those of you who are going, what are they talking about? Here's what we do. We picked a county. We picked an area. We go into Real Quest Pro. We put in the county, the state, the county, and we're pulling up all this ownership data. And you can sit and, and add filters. Like, do I want anything that, you know, is zoned X, Y, Z? Nope. So I'm going to take those out. Do I want anything that's, you know, assessed, you know, at this price? Nope. Take that out. Don't want anything that were the taxes. Are, nope. Take that out. So you can, and even Lori's saying you can even shrink it down. There's other things. There's a lot, a lot of filters. And that's who we are. And that's, was this Brandon who wrote this note? Yeah, Brandon, who's now become a, a data, um, he realized he's a data nerd. And that's what he's getting into. I, I actually find it fun, too. I get in there and I like to look at that stuff. I'm, But I'm not doing the mailers, obviously. That's your thing. But I look at it in the after after fact. I go look at, I kind of go look at, oh, that's what Stephen was, was looking for when he sent out this batch. And I, I can uncover it on the due diligence side and see where you were going. There's a lot of cute little tools uh, out there. Uh, more and more you're seeing cute little tools that are developed mostly by former Land Academy members Yeah. to make this easy. Yeah. Uh, to press a button, it scrubs all the stuff out for you, and, and you end with a data set, and then you click a button and send it to offers to owners. And I can't describe to you uh, how I believe this is the fastest way to wreck your real estate career. These cute little buttons, you don't learn anything. The easy button. Yeah, you need to get in the data. We don't have any Land Academy member in the advanced group that would ever use True. a tool like that ever they wouldn't do a batch pricing thing yeah downloading this oh, data right. working through it looking at it getting a feel for it uh pricing it correctly right. through through you know i don't even want to get into pricing and then feeling having this sense of pride when you send it to the uh, offers to owner the mailing company it's true and then if it doesn't come back, maybe the mailer doesn't yield the results that you want, You, your fingers are in there. All 10 fingers are in that data. And you can look back and say, wow, you know what? I either overpriced it, I underpriced it, I didn't price it well enough from a small geography standpoint. Uh, wow, I'll never send offers to uh, HOA again. That yielded nothing. I can just pick up the phone and call the HOA right. like Jill does and see if they have any properties for sale. In fact, in this specific case, if a if you get a mailer back that there's a ton of HOA owned properties because mm -hmm. they foreclosed on it, call the call HOA. Them. They'll give you some property just to get it back on their rolls. Mm -hmm. So there's a, you can't learn with an easy button. You just can't. Mm -hmm. You know, none of us. When I was a kid, we all knew how to work on cars because you just had to. They're carbureted and, and stuff went wrong. We all know how to change tires. Now it's, they, we have AAA, you know, and, and, we're raising a whole generation, and I'm not complaining. I think it's actually a, a pro, it's progress in, in our humanity. I don't know anything about these cars. I wouldn't know the first thing to do because they, they've made it an easy button. Is that good for us? Yeah, I don't want to be an auto mechanic. If I wanted to, though, it would be bad. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I can just imagine what our driveway would look like. <laughs> I'm. Thank you for, by the way, thank you. I just, I'm just not that person. I don't need you out there tinkering no. on f and four half done cars no. in our driveway. No, neither do Your I. Your way is much better. Find yes. the professional, take it to them, yeah. let them take it apart in their driveway. Well, like I said we'll yesterday, I think. That's what they're Working on at. a car would require me to leave my desk, that's and true. that's not efficient. That is true. Today's topic? Oh, today's topic is why. Uh, we have to stop. Why have we stopped yelling at title agents to close faster? This is the meat of the show. Jill's meat. Glad, glad you can join us today. <laughs> yeah. I was just had it. I was having like a little daydream. Like, of, where are you uh, going? Are you imagining yourself as a mechanic? Four cars in the driveway. Oh. What cars they would be? I just had like a, oh, no. a flash moment. Wow. You tuned out. Yep. That's hilarious. A flash moment of the four cars I'd be working on. What are they? They're um. I think I know one of all them. German. I hope I hope I know. I hope one of them's the one that I really want. Go ahead. They're all German, okay. and they all have engines in the back. Does one of them start with a three and end with a six? Yeah, three fifty six oh, is. Thank a, you. And Porsche three fifty six is the first car I would okay, have. Okay, thank you. Lined up there. I really don't. I'd like it to be done in the driveway, <laughs> not undone, not laid out in the driveway. Hey, baby, here's your car. I have a late seventies uh, Volkswagen bus. 
which is in the driveway right now, but all done. And yeah, anyway. Okay. This is the meat of the show. Here we go. So why, what's changed, Jill? <laughs> Things have changed around the office a little bit. Here's what I've come to realize, and I'm saying this to share you, because it's frustrating unless you can, you know, just chill out and, and you need to hear this. Their pace is now set. It always has been set. Virus or no virus. Pre-virus, I could push them along. I could get them going. I could dangle carrots. I could threaten. I talk about the yelling. Hey, we did this. Post-virus, and they're just like, it's that's it. You're, in some situations, I'm not kidding. You're almost lucky to get one because I've had areas that they've said, we can't even take any customers. I'm like, are you flipping kidding me? Hire help. But they're like, I can't find good help. I'm like, okay. So I had to, I had to chill out and say, this is it. It's, it's, stop hitting your head against the wall. This is who they are. So what do I do now? What are my best practices to, to make this work? So here's what I do. And actually, I had, this does work. And I, I'm not suffering at all. Number one, when you find a good one, keep them. You know, I've got, I have, you know, most of the time I have one agent doing multiple deals for me at the same time. And I reward them. I send them treats. I thank them. I'm nice to them. We just do our best to agree on the closing date up front. Do our best. And in, even then, it's not uncommon now. This Friday becomes next Friday. Because not, and it's not even necessarily them. That You know, my sellers are kind of dragging their feet. You know, getting the documents signed for whatever reason. There's always a reason. And you just can't hit your head against the wall. So another thing that I do, number two, so number one is, you know, find the good ones, reward them. Number two, help them through the process. I have uh, multiple people on my team that work directly with these agents and we do our best to anticipate the, their needs. We pretty much know. We've done, oh, thousands of escrow transactions and I know right away what they're gonna need especially what's really nice too by the way with the same agent they already have all my all my uh, LLC docs they have this they have that they know how I do it I've got their their bank wire and you know account routing is already in my account there's a lot of things we don't have to do anymore but if it's a brand new person I just had one the other day I just had a brand new I'm selling a property and we're going with an attorney in a state that I've never worked with he's facilitating the transaction and I just sent him an email packet with included the six documents I know he's going the to six ask documents for. that every agent, title agent, and every lawyer want. Yep. So have it ready to go on your desktop, exactly. all zipped up and ready to go. Last thing you want is him saying, oh, I need this, and then you email it no, back. Yeah. And now I need this, and then you email it back. That's a pain in the butt for everybody. Right. So I just sent him to him right up front. And I think I shocked the guy. I'm sure I shocked the guy. He's like, oh, thank you. I, I guess... I guess we have nothing to talk about. Nothing yep. to complain about. No, I'm kind of, I'm kind of ready. He's like, and it's like, whew, you know, he doesn't have to chase me for anything too. So, and then here's the best tip. That's the third and the most important tip of why I stop yelling at agents. I accept this is their process. You know what? We're just going to do three to five times the volume because they're taking two to three nice, or Joe. so times to close. So, it I've makes got, me want to kiss you. Thank you. There I, is a, an efficiency solution around people's inefficiencies yeah. nine times out of ten. So instead of instead of doing a fewer deals and, and a waiting, quicker volume, right. you know, and I, you know, because now my communication is all spread out, I send them to this attorney. I'm going to wait three weeks anyway for him to close. What am I going to do? Just sit on my hands for three weeks? No. No. Heck I'm going to no. do more and more and more deals the only and downside. that's how you keep your you keep your uh your volume and your money going great i'm doing it's going that much slower i can do that much more done the only downside to that is you, you need more cash on hand it not feels necessarily take longer. because i'm wiring i'm wiring the money because you know what my selling yeah i guess it, but it gives you more time to prepare matter. to sell it get it posted correctly yeah. do it all that stuff so there's a silver lining in that yeah you know you can work with 
inefficiency and, and idiocy nine times out of ten. You can make it work for you. Yeah. Instead of getting angry about it. That's Ex- what this episode's really about. Exactly. It's just I'm just sharing with you. Your frustration is not just you. It's me too. It's the way it is. And in our environment, the bigger the deals that I'm doing, the the more I need title insurance, the more I'm that's that's the way I'm going to have to close. And by the way, these are listing agent approved transactions for Jill. So she's already gone to a, a very reputable, experienced land broker in the area and said, this is even before she buys a property. Right. Does this, can you sell it? What can you sell this for? And they tell her 80,000 bucks and she does not tell them, oh, we're buying it for 20 right, and next right. week. So do you have to yell at anybody when, that, when the numbers are like that? No, you no. don't. You have to have some patience. I can't believe I'm saying that these words come out of my mouth. Isn't it a bummer? Because I, I have, and I've had my brokers saying, "Tell me when to tell me when you have the deed. Tell me when you have the deed." Because I, I, I get I, the right brokers too. This is not about brokers, but they're excited and they want to sell. And I'm trying. I really am. I want to hurry and close these deals because whoever he's got in his pipeline who's interested, I don't want to lose that that buyer. I have one final point. If you're done, yes. Yesterday, uh, last night, Joe and I went to dinner with some some very successful friends that we have and I got up to go to the restroom and I did and I came back to the table and I said this to these guys this is a statement of the world that we live in right now and I don't think it's going to change it used to be at that same restaurant it's a tiny little neighborhood restaurant here I would walk through the restaurant and, and they would say hello Mr. Butella what can I get you is your is are you having a great experience this evening is there anything I can get you to make you know and on and on the experience that I had last night was, uh, I'm sorry, put a mask on, uh, whoever you are, don't stand there, stand here. This is how we do it now. And, and so it's the same thing in a real estate deal. You, this is just, a, did I get angry and do a throw like a lot of people do? No, no, that's just, that's unfortunately, or fortunately, however you look at it, this is the world that we live in. And the people that had these smaller responsibilities like a title agent to complete a deal have a lot more power now because of these current events and uh, getting angry about it it's just going to make you one of those like a hermit old man that's all it's going to do nobody wants that nobody wants that what's the version of me uh, I don't know. They used to say spinster you know Ooh, or like the, cat lady the lady at the end of the block that won't let you you know go on her lawn that's <laughs> Which you, still kind of is. You kids. We're at the end of the block. Get off my driveway. And she gets upset about the driveway. <laughs> She's not alone, though. Well, I'm afraid these little kids are going to wipe out and <laughs> hit their head, and I'm like going to be in my driveway. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Thanks. Happy you could join us today. Every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, you can find us here on the Land Academy Show. Tuesdays and Thursdays this week. That's a hint. We are on the House Academy Show. There's changes coming. Tomorrow, the episode on the House Academy show is called Why SFRs Are Better Than Multi-Tenant Properties from an Investment Standpoint. You are not alone in your real estate ambition. Boy, I chatted a bit on that. It's smart, though. Okay. It really is. That's a, That was good, Jill. That's a good Jill type advice. You're, you're, Thank you. I think you're on the front line every every day. And I think Thank you. now is not the time to, to fight against no. the stuff that's going on, especially in real estate deals. You just got to go with it, and it can work for you. It's just, we have to change. We're all going to have to change. Exactly. I don't like it. Yeah. I want it to go back to, you know, November of uh, 2019, but I don't have a choice. So why fight it? Thank you. The Land Academy Show remains commercial-free for you, our loyal listener. So wherever you're watching, wherever you're listening, please subscribe and rate us there. We're We're Stephen Jill. Information and inspiration to buy undervalued property.